All right. Uh, welcome to the SLS show, episode six on staying connected in healthy ways. And I'm Dawn Flood from Student Leadership Services, and I'm here with a bunch of our familiar SLS student friends. Um, let's start with Isabel. Hi, I'm Izzy. I'm a sophomore at Valley Lutheran. Excellent. Glad you're here today. Diamond. Hi, I'm Diamond, and I'm a senior at, at Atherton High School. Yes, and congratulations, Diamond. You officially are done with high school. Woo -hoo. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm Natalie. Hi, I'm Natalie, and I'm a freshman at Wald Lake Northern. Excellent. Glad to have you. And Faith. Hi, I'm Faith. I'm a freshman at Charlotte High. Excellent. And a happy belated birthday to Faith from SLS. And Loretta. Hi, I'm Loretta. I'm a sophomore at Taylor High School. Excellent. And Sasha. Hi, I'm Sasha. I'm a junior at Wild Lake Northern. Awesome. And Haley. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm a sophomore at Wild Lake Northern. Excellent. All right. And then my co-worker, Mindy. Hi, I'm Mindy. I'm a prevention specialist working with Dawn at SLS. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in on episode six. And today what we're going to talk about, we're going to focus on staying connected with each other in healthy ways. And whenever we talk about connection, we have to talk about relationships because connections each equals relationships and relationships equals connections. All right. And healthy relationships require time and energy from all people involved. So let's start with talking about who we have relationships with. So students, who do you right now in your life as a high school student, who do you have relationships with? Go ahead and raise your hand. All right, Faith, who do you have relationships with? My friends. All right, friends. Okay, absolutely. All right. Who else do we have relationships with? Sasha. Uh, family. Family, yep. Friends, family, okay. Uh, Natalie, who do we have relationships with? Teachers. Teachers, yes, excellent. All right, Loretta, I saw your hand. Our parents. Parents, yeah, okay. All right, who else? Think about all the people you interact with that you develop some type of relationship with. Uh, Diamond. Classmates. Classmates, yeah. Okay, so they may not be your friends, but the people you go to school with, right? Okay, all right, anybody else? Who else do you have relationships with? Sasha, is coaches. your hand up? Yeah, it's like coaches. Uh, coaches, yes, thank you. All right, coaches, yep. Who else? That's it, Isabel, who, who else do we have relationships we didn't name? I would say like, boyfriends and girlfriends yeah i was waiting for that <laughs> yeah. boyfriend girlfriend yeah okay absolutely all right those are relationships anybody else that you can think of we have relationships with Is that it all right so on your list you have friends family teachers parents classmates coaches boyfriends girlfriends okay all right, so on this list, who would you say is the most important relationship in your life right now? Loretta. Uh, parents. Parents, okay, so Loretta says parents, okay. All right, your parents would be very happy that you said that, Loretta. <laughs> okay, uh, Haley. I would say both parents and friends. Okay, parents and friends. All right, Faith. Family. Family, okay, all right, and does family, who, who does the family include when we say family? Faith, who would that include? Um, like your aunt, your grandma, um, cousins, okay. parents, siblings. Okay, all right, all right, cool. So friends, family, and parents, okay? So out of the list, friends, family, and parents, out of those three, which would you say is the most important? right now in your life? Are they all equally tied? Or is there one that's a little higher? Diamond. I would have to say family is a little higher. A little higher, okay. All yeah. right. 
All right, uh, Loretta. Um, yeah, like Diamond said, family and parents are a lot higher than friends. Okay, wow. Okay, that's excellent. Okay, all right. Excellent, very good. Okay, cool. All right, now, um, when it comes to relationships with these different people, and if we probably thought about it a few more minutes, we probably could add more to our list, because I know there's more people that we have relationships with um, that maybe is not on our list. But are the relationships that we have, are they always healthy? No, so Haley is shaking her head no, okay, all right. Um, and why do you think that they're not always healthy, Haley? Any idea? Um, maybe because they're like, like not beneficial for both people, like one person gains more out of it and one person loses something out of it yeah i like that so they're not beneficial for both people okay one gets more out of it than others okay all right so a question we have to ask ourselves because haley is absolutely right okay it may not be beneficial it may not be equal equal grounds okay so one of the things that we have to look at when we look at the relationships that we have um, is are those relationships healthy where are all those relationships unhealthy? So this is what I want us to do, okay? So uh, you're, I'm gonna break you up into two groups. And in your Zoom groups, I, I want you to talk about and decide who's gonna be the writer, once you get in your groups, decide who's gonna be the writer to write down your group's list. I want you to have a conversation about what are, um, what, make, what are the characteristics of a healthy relationship and what are the characteristics of an unhealthy relationship. Okay, so you can make a list right down the middle, healthy on one side, unhealthy on the other, okay? Everybody understand? Yep, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you into groups and we'll see how we do here. And I'll pop in. All right, so Faith, Haley, Diamond, and Natalie are in one group. Isabel, Loretta, and Sasha are in another group. All right, so I'll see you in a minute. All right, so let's see what we came up with. All right, um, so uh, let's start with, I don't remember who was in the rooms. Um, okay, so Diamond, let's start with your group. Let's start with the healthy things first. What do you have on your list? For healthy, we said both people benefit. Okay. Uh, there's communication. All right. Uh, loyalty. Okay. Trust. Yep. Compromising. Ooh, compromise, good. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship is two-sided. Both people enjoy it. Uh, we have supportive. Okay. And positive energy. Ooh, positive energy. Okay, all right. Um, I'll come back to you in a second for the other half. All right, uh, Loretta's group, what did you have uh, for healthy? Um, for healthy, we had respect. Ooh, good. Um, uh, specifying what the relationship was. Like, um, so, like, n knowing that what both sides are. So, if you're a friendship or not. Okay, all right. Um, supporting clear-cut communication Ooh, clear. um, okay, good. verbalizing so being able to talk through your problems and not just hold them in Ooh, okay oh that's really good good okay anything else mm, no pretty much it okay, okay. all right um uh, so let's look at unhealthy diamond back to you uh, we said one-sided. Okay. Lack of communication. Okay. Uh, the relationship is based on convenience and nothing else. Ooh, that's good. Uh, mistrust. Okay. Mean words or actions. Okay. Controlling. Ooh, okay. That's number one. Compromising. Wait, what was the last one? 
No compromising. Oh, no compromising. Okay. Draining and Ooh. negative energy. Draining. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow, big list. Okay. Uh, Loretta? Well, they said mostly what, exactly what we said. Okay. Did you have any other different one? Um, no, we have like emotionally dumping or emotionally draining. So like putting one person's emotions out more than the other and just okay. depending on them. Okay. Yeah. So and then like not having a balance between um, emotional dumping versus healthy venting where it's um, somebody is used as more of a um, an outlet for, for that dumping without looking for a solution or just that type of thing. And it, it becomes like a little burdensome, that type of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Sasha. Holy moly. Okay. Um, anything else that as you were reporting out that came to your, came to your mind? That about it? Look at my list to see if you got everything. I think you did. Um, what about uh, takes only? They only take, they never give. Would that be healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy. Unhealthy. Okay, so they take only, never give. All right. Um, what about lying? Or do we kind of have that with mistrust? Should lying go on here? Yeah, like the dishonesty. Dishonesty, okay. Do I have dishonesty? I don't know if I did, okay. All right. Let's see what else. Um, oh, what about this? Okay. Um, being needy. What about needy? Is that healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy. Unhealthy? Someone that's really needy all the time? Okay. All right. Okay. So which list was it easiest for you to come up with in your groups? Was it the healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy. Okay, why, Loretta? Because, like, Sarah brought out, like, a point that, like, during this quarantine, it was, like, really, you, you had a lot of time to think about, like, your relationships and, like, how you saw people, especially, like, now that you're not seeing them, you realize a lot more stuff that, like, goes on because you have a lot of time by yourself. So, like, you realized a lot more that needs to be changed and, like, wasn't as healthy as you thought it was. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, Sasha, is your hand up? Oh, I think Sasha's frozen. So, about how right now. Oh, we lost you, Sasha. We can't hear you. Is it okay now? There we go. Say it again. Okay, 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 perfect, yeah. So I read a quote the other day that it was like, in the in the rush to get back to normal, um, take this time to c reconsider which parts of normal are worth getting back to. And uh, uh, I love that. I know, it really, it's really good. So it goes along kind of what relates uh, as well as certain activities, certain like decluttering your life, that type of situation. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I love that. Okay. Uh, Haley, is your hand up? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Um, I just want to say, like, especially with the quarantine, it's like, I, there's certain, going off of what both Sasha and Loretta said, like, there are certain parts that I miss and really want to get back to, like, seeing specific friends or something like that. And there's, like, some people that I'm able to realize weren't healthy relationships and oh. that um because I'm like not like um so like I'm not thinking about them 24 7 and wanting to get back and hang out with them so um the quarantine's been good for that in that sense good good excellent excellent very good okay perfect all right so I want to show you a little video because I asked other students that same question that I just asked you about what makes up a healthy relationship versus an unhealthy relationship. So they created a video, okay, and it was students from Plymouth High School, which is in Wayne County, and this video is called uh, Doctor Relationship, okay. 
So, um, and again, it's created by students, so it wasn't, you know, Julia Roberts that created it. All right, so let's see what they, they have to say. You've taken classes in so many subjects. You know everything you need to get through life, right? What about relationships? This is where Dr. Relationship comes in. Let's check out our subjects in the lab. I don't think it's my job to keep covering for her at work and making excuses. She expects me to lie to our manager. What do you think? You need to focus on the relationship you're in. When you're in it, if you're spending time with someone you need, be with them, not on your phone. You know, people really hate it when other people are late every day. Like when I'm late for school every day. We have a problem here. He needs to use iMessages. Don't assign to someone else what you want to say. I think, I feel, I want, own your feelings. I'm tired of you being late every day and making me late for school every day. I get tardies and my parents get really angry. See, much better. Now he's explaining how he feels and also why he feels a certain way. Sounds like a problem with your parents. The problem here is a fact that she isn't empathetic. She also seems a bit defensive. She is the one that is causing the problem. I'm sorry, I had no idea that your teacher cared or that it mattered to your, mattered to your parents. I don't want to get you in daily trouble. I either need to get my act together or drive myself. This is much better. She is not defensive. She is empathetic, considerate of the other person's concerns, and exhibiting a desire to self-manage. If you want to increase your chances of having a successful relationship, you need to 1. Have open communication and be willing to share your thoughts. 2. Listen to what someone is saying and pay attention to how they are saying things. 3. Use I statements when sharing how you are feeling. 4. Be honest. 5. Don't be offensive. 6. Exhibit empathy for the other person. And most important, remember relationship skills are like developing any other skill. You need to be willing to learn, practice, and reflect on your performance. Pointed out in that video that perhaps didn't make it on our list. Was there anything? Uh, Natalie. Empathy. Yeah, empathy. Okay. So they said empathy was a good thing, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And why do you think they they mentioned empathy quite a bit? Why do you think they mentioned empathy when it came to relationships? Loretta. Because like it's a really important part of it. Because like in a really in a relationship, you need to be able to understand where another person is coming from, and yeah. not always just make it about yourself or not care about the other person. Right, yeah, it's huge, it's huge, okay. Uh, anything else that they mentioned in the doctor relationship video? Uh, Sasha. Um, they said that kind of an unhealthy trait was uh, being overly defensive in trying to have open communication and resolve conflicts. Okay. Yeah, overly defensive, yep, okay. Good, anybody else? Did anybody hear him say iMessages? Okay, anybody know what iMessages are? Uh, Diamond. Uh, an iMessage is a way to tell someone how you feel without uh, across at attacking. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. So instead of yelling at them when you're upset about something, okay, you would frame it as, you know, uh, I, I felt really upset when you said this, or I felt really upset when you did this, okay, rather than just going off the handle and start screaming and yelling, okay. All right, excellent, very good. All right, so it's the healthy relationships, this side, okay, that we want to nurture, all right, and that we want to nourish and stay connected uh, with the, those that have the healthy relationships with us. And I'm glad you all said that during this quarantine and this, this separation from um, our everyday schedule and school and stuff like that, I'm glad all of you said that you're taking this time to kind of reevaluate those relationships. That's huge, okay, to reflect on that. Because 
sometimes we get so you know immersed in everyday stuff that sometimes we're spending a lot of energy over here and not here and so i'm glad a lot of you said it, you're starting to spend more time here okay so um mindy is going to kind of share with us some different strategies that we can use in different ways um, to nurture healthy relationships. So things that we can do to stay that connected so that we can uh, have all these positive things and continue to grow that. So Mindy, what are some strategies that we could do? All right, so as we move on to this next section, now that we've talked about uh, the difference between healthy relationships and unhealthy relationships, I wanted to spend a few minutes getting um, talking to you about different ways to that we stay connected with people. Um, but instead of me telling you ways to stay connected, I'm going to let you tell me. So, but I want to look at it through three different lenses. So as you reflect over this time that you've been stuck in quarantine, um, uh, what are the, think of some of the strategies that you've used to stay connected to the people in your life. And the three ways that I want you to think about is the first one is one-on-one. -on -one. So what have you done to stay connected in a one-on-one -on -one basis, like with a best friend or a boyfriend or a sibling? Um, what are the ways that you have stayed connected in groups? Um, so are you doing Zoom parties or group walks or whatever? And then the last one, are you doing anything as far as random acts of kindness go to stay connected to people who you might just have peripheral relationships with? So first, before we, we won't do all three at once, we're gonna start with one-on-one. -on -one. So go ahead and tell me um, how have you during this time, and you can even talk about before um, all of this happened, how do you stay connected one-on-one -on -one with people who are important to you? You wanna raise your hand? Oh, Dawn, I don't think I can see the hands raised. Oh, okay, so Faith, go ahead, Faith. Uh, FaceTime. FaceTime? Mm-hmm. Okay, what else? Anybody else? Uh, Sasha. Well, um, before the quarantine, um, to stay connected one-on-one, -on -one, I would love to have in-person hangouts with my friends, go out to coffee, go out to lunch, and just sit and then talk about our lives and really just catch up. It's really important. Okay. So coffee, lunch, hangout. Anybody go to the mall? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. All right, what else? Uh, Loretta? Um, like Sasha said, so like for some hangouts, like I know a lot of like my other close best friends, they've done like six feet apart dates where like they go out and like they can go to the park or get ice cream, but like stand six feet apart and like keep the social distancing rules. Like they did that like super early where we didn't like want to be around each other. Yeah, great. Great idea. My friends, uh, a friend of mine, her daughter, they had these six feet apart dates where they would all drive their car to a parking lot and then sit in their car, like on the back of their car or in their trunk or if it's an SUV, open up the back hood and just kind of sit in a circle um, and all talk to each other. Yeah. What else one-on-one? -on -one? So nobody here uses Snapchat or Instagram <laughs> or texting or any other social media tools to stay connected to your friends. That's all off the table now? Well, we, we use it. We do use it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to guess you text or Snapchat and all of those. What's your favorite activity to do with your best friend? Anyone wants a favorite activity to do with your best friend? Loretta? Um, so I have two best friends. My older best friend, she's a senior, and she makes like really cool, cool like bead bracelets. So usually like I would go over a house and we make a group of those and we'd like either sell them at school or give them out to people. 
So oh, like nice. we've, we've okay. made it like we've made some for our seniors to like give out to them. Oh cool. That's a great idea. So can I I'm just gonna put crafts here. Yeah, it's a great idea. Crafts with friends. Okay. What's your favorite way to anyone else with a favorite activity with a friend? That's yeah. right. Faith. Um, I like to go to the beach with my friends. The beach, yeah. Yeah, Florida Faith here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bella. Diamond. Diamond. Uh, we like to do movie night. Movie oh. nights? Yeah. Good. All right. And Sasha? Um, doing something that's a tradition. So I have four really close friends and since middle school we've had these little um, pizza run traditions where we all get together at my house and then we walk to our local 7-Eleven, get a bunch of snacks, then call the local pizza place, walk over there, and then go and eat it at Commerce Elementary. So it's just a tradition that we do every summer and it's one of my favorite things. Oh, that's great. Oh, I love it. Very cool. Great. All right, health, that's a lot of good ideas there and um, pretty uh, common things um, that are all great to do uh, to uh, foster a good one-on-one -on -one relationship. What about groups? What are some things that you guys do uh, in groups to stay connected? Uh, Haley. Um, so the other day, um, me and my, this could also be one-on-one, -on -one, but the other day me and my friends, um, we all brought blankets and like a lunch and then just like sat in someone's driveway. We all stayed very far apart, but like just doing like a socially distanced like brunch, um, cool. like or, look, picnic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Social distance picnic. That's I'm going to call it SD. I'm going to abbreviate for, <laughs> for space here. Excellent. All so right. distance picnic. Yeah. Natalie? Group FaceTimes. Group FaceTime. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, Diamond? Um, just the other day, me and my family, we had a, a Zoom painting session where we all got on Zoom and we, um, we talked about some things and like had some funny questions going and somebody else was in charge of music and then we all painted and talked and then at the end we showed our painting. I love that. I am amazed. That is so awesome. That's really cool. Oh, you guys should try that. I like that. That's neat. Uh, Loretta? Um, so me and my friends, we had like a, a Zoom was kind of a birthday party for one of my friends. And so like we set up a Netflix and it was sort of like a Zoom movie night and food. And like we had our families come in too and we all watched a movie together. Sweet. Awesome. I hear that's been happening a lot. That's a good one. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Haley? Just like various like group chats, either on just text or Snapchat or Instagram or wherever. Okay. Awesome. Wow, I'm getting some good ideas from you guys. Yeah. So prior to quarantine, what would be your favorite activity that you would do with a group, a good group of friends? Loretta? Um, so our track team, we have like this tr tradition. So every two weeks, Saturdays, we'd all go out as a team together and go out to eat with our coaches. Or like if we celebrate, we're celebrating a win, we go out to like a buffet in our area and kind of like have a like small little get together to catch up with like previous members and seniors or college students. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Nice. Anything else? A favorite activity that you do with friends as a group prior to being in quarantine? No. No? All right. Let's try the, our last one. Uh, have any of you, since you've been under quarantine, done any random acts of kindness, be it for a family member, a friend, a neighbor, an acquaintance, as uh, a way to stay connected? 
So um, I have a lot of uh, very close senior friends. And so the other day I, I baked a bunch of cookies with their like their college on it in their college colors. And I went and I spent my entire Saturday just going around and delivering it to each one of their doors for them to pick up later. And so that was really fun to do. And um, I love to see the reactions. So, yeah. Oh, that great. Oh, that was great, Sasha. I bet you they really appreciated that. Yeah, it was really fun to do. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Uh, Haley. Um, what I've done during quarantine is, I don't know if you've seen those like rainbows over Michigan, where like people paint like a rainbow or like rainbow colors on their door to like show oh. support for healthcare workers and just oh, yeah. like, tell everyone like, like keep smiling and just keep supporting one another. So I, me, and my mom painted um, a door that everyone can see, um, like a window. So for okay. Yeah. Wow, cool. All right. Excellent. Anybody else? Isabel, we haven't heard from you. Any idea? Um, so today, actually, I made a gift bag for my friend because okay. she's just going through stuff, like stuff. And so I went and I delivered it to her house today. So that's what I did. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That little thought means a lot. Uh, Loretta. Um, so it was like um, one of my aunts, it was her 50th birthday and we were supposed to celebrate it, but she was going to work and no one was home. So I bought her a cake for her 50th birthday and I surprised her at home and like I delivered it to her with like a little card so like before she left for work she was like able to have a cake and a card from all of us. Cool! Ah, sweet. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Anybody okay, else? So what is the, so one more question related to this, what is the nicest random act of kindness that you've either given or received that you can remember? Ooh, that's good. Natalie. Uh, I had a birthday in April and a couple of my friends dropped off some gifts, like, just at my house outside. Oh, that's nice. Very cool. Dropped off gifts. Sweet. All right. Uh, is Isabel? I threw my dad a Zoom birthday party. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It was very chaotic, but it worked. Yeah. Okay. It's fun. Anybody else? Oh, Loretta? So, like, I've never played the game Monopoly, like, ever before. Oh. So, um, my uncle from Nebraska, he mailed me my first box of Monopoly, and I got it yesterday. I was, like, super excited, and I cried for, like, five minutes because I've never played it before. Oh, wow. So, have you played it yet since you got it? Um, no, I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it tomorrow with my mom and my grandma, so we're, I'm excited. Cool. That's awesome. awesome. So this is, again, a surprise gift of that birthday, but a gift in the mail. Yeah. Monop Monopoly's fun. It is. Unless you get bankrupt. <laughs> no, it's fun. Right. Right. The key is you have to buy Park Place and what's the other one next to Park Place? It's been a long time since I played. Boardwalk? I think it's Boardwalk. Or, oh, okay, yeah, because those are some high-dollar properties. You make a lot of money renting those out, so that's a, that's a key. All right, so um, when we talk about, and some of you actually mentioned the word, um, traditions. So what role do you think traditions plays in helping maintain a healthy relationship? Why might that be important? That's a good question. Any ideas on that? Sasha? So traditions, I think, are a really important thing for really unification and um, kind of tying everything back to sort of a core feeling of, um, you know, we are, we have always been friends, we're, very, we're together, that type of, uh, the feeling of unity, despite certain conflicts you've may, you may have had with person or the friend or something you can always go back to such a tradition for yeah for unity really 
Okay, so for unity, super important. Why else might traditions be important? Loretta? Um, and like she said, I feel like traditions is something that every person, like, that you have a relationship you want to have. It is just something that's basically, like, installed in our lives. Like, even, like, Christmas tra traditions with our family. It's, like, the core of all of our friendships. It's something that we all remember that we were supposed to do, and it's something that brings memories into your life. Okay, so it brings memories into your life. So it unites us, it brings memories into our life. Anything else? No? So let me tell you a, a little story from my own personal life. Um, when in 2006, my husband got a job in Germany and we had to move our two children uh, to Germany and take them away uh, from all of their family and their friends. And we lived in Germany for three years, and then we lived in China for four years, and then we lived in Brazil for three years. So I've moved my kids all over the place, and they've spent a lot of time away from their family. And so one of the things that I try to do to help, um, not counteract, but to help create unity and good memories in my family is we establish several traditions. So one of those traditions is every year on my kids' birthdays, we watch all of their baby videos from you know, the time they were born until the time that they're like toddlers. And so we watch those videos. That's a tradition we have. Um, another tradition um, we have is um, family movie night. That's like a very, you don't mess with family movie night. It doesn't matter what else is important going on. Uh, family movie night is a thing. Um, other friends, I did interviews with other friends who were um, expats like us or people that moved around about the role of traditions. We had one of the families we knew, every place they traveled, they bought a snow globe. So they had a snow globe collection from all over the world. Another one did a photo project, a family photo project, after every uh, place they lived or trip that they went on, and they had it, put it in like a big poster frame. So they had pictures and tickets to the zoo or copies of airplane tickets. So they had all of these kind of strong memories and how do they create not just a um, unity and memories, but um, I'll see, how do, how do I say it? Um, just a way to uh, connection to each other. So um, I think that's an important word to add, connection. So I think that rituals and traditions, especially right now, um, are, are really important. I have heard several people talk about birthdays, and I know uh, I've seen it happen a lot around here that because people can't have that kind of tradition of having a birthday party with their friends, they've kind of recreated that tradition, and now they're doing birthday parades. So two of my nieces had birthdays in lockdown, and all of their friends, instead of you know, coming to their house for a party, drove by their house and left gifts, gifts on the doorstep or had signs in their car um, and those sorts of things. Because I think traditions too give you a sense of normalcy um, so that you can kind of feel, especially right now, uh, when things are a little topsy-turvy. So anything else you want to add to that, Don? No, nope. I think it's, no, that's fantastic. All right. Excellent. Um, yeah, oh, a couple ideas that I wanted to share with you for random acts of kindness, in case you're so inclined in the next couple weeks. Um, one idea that we found was to create a calendar of all your family and friends' birthdays um, so that you can, if you don't already, send them um, a card or a text or photos or, or some sort of way to celebrate their birthday. Another one I thought was nice that's kind of similar to um, one of the ones that you did was to make a sign for a friend's bedroom door. So maybe you have a friend who's a senior and they're missing out on their graduation. Maybe you could make a cool senior sign for them and drop it off at their house and they could either stick it like in their yard or on their door. Um, another one that would be good if you have a friend who's a graduating senior or just as a nice gesture is make a photo montage for them. So find a bunch of photos, especially if you've been friends with them for a long time, and make a collage of photos of you guys together over time. So maybe it's three or four of high school, or if it's been a lifelong 
friendship through your childhood um, and give them a collage um, as a gift. So those were other ideas that we had uh, for a photo montage. So we're gonna go to move on now. Dawn's gonna talk to you about using a theme as a way to stay connected to other people. Okay, so uh, because one thing that we've learned during these SLS shows, we talked a lot about prioritizing organization and time management. You remember those episodes? A lot of you are on it, okay? All right, so sometimes um, in order to keep connection and keep uh, nourishing and nurturing those healthy relationships, we need to schedule it. And so an easy, fun way to schedule connecting with others in a healthy way is to create a theme week to connect. So kind of like spirit week. Now I know all your schools have spirit weeks, right? Yeah, okay, all right. So to create a theme week, to connect, and it can be as crazy as you want it. So for example, Monday, it could be like uh, Mondays with mom. Now that's not real, you know, thrilling, okay? But it could be a thing, okay? Mondays with mom, all right? But having each day, take a week, have each day and dedicate it to connecting um, with your healthy relationships in a fun way, okay? So I want you to kind of put on your uh, creative thinking cap. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna split you in two Zoom rooms and I might mix you up a little bit. You might be in different rooms than you were the first time. And I want you to kind of talk about and just kind of sketch out what could be a fun theme week that you all could do. And it'd be cool if you did the same thing in different areas and then we came back together and we talked about it. Or you can do it differently. But come up with some, some creative ways for each day of the week to um, connect with those different relationships. Thumbs up if you understand my directions. All right, cool. All right, let's see what we got here. So for our group, we came up with like something you could do with like your friends or family, which is like movie theme night or okay. just theme in general. So we had like, for the Monday through Friday for the week, like different genres of movies that you could do. So Monday we had horror movies. Okay. Tuesday Disney movies. Wednesday rom coms. Thursday Disney Channel movies. Fridays animated cartoon, and you could dress up as that character, like okay. from your favorite movie is. And we also had like a decades too. So oh. each could dress, dress a different decade. So Monday was seventies. Tuesday 80s, Wednesday 90s, Thursday 2000s, and Fridays with 50s. So you could also pick a movie to go with that genre of that day and dress up as that character and then watch a movie with your friends and family. Oh, I love it. Wow, you guys got great ideas. Excellent. Anybody else want to add to anything that maybe your group member didn't say? No? Okay, excellent. Well, I encourage you to, to, to try this, okay, in the next week. So today's Tuesday, okay? Um, so maybe you can start with, with Wednesday and do some things, all right? Because, and then come back on next Tuesday and tell us about it, because this is a great, I love this. This is a great, great idea. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, that's about our time, okay? So, um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. If each person can tell me one thing that you learned today about healthy connections, I always like to do a little review. What's one thing you learned today about healthy connections? Uh, Sasha. Um, to make a conscious effort to use I statements when discussing conflicts, taking responsibility for your feelings, Okay, excellent. Effort to use I statements. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Faith. It's good to have like group or one on one time. Yeah, group or one on one time. Yep. Excellent. Uh, Haley. Um, even with these crazy times, there's still lots of things you can do to see your friends and just keep updated with everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. All right, Loretta. I'm like getting some new ideas to like set up traditions that can help 
like my friendship and relationships with like people from school and like in my family yes traditions rituals they're a key to uh, strengthening and keeping relationships going in a good way anybody else uh diamond um how to stay connected um through anything with friends and family and how to determine really if a relationship is healthy or should you really hang on to a relationship? Yes, determine if I should hang on. Yeah, hang on to it. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Uh, Natalie? Uh, we got some new ideas for random acts of kindness and like how to hang out better, like different ways to hang out with our friends and stuff. Yeah. Good, I'm glad. You want to hang out, random. Good, excellent. Is? I was going to say what Diamond said. Oh, sure. <laughs> what is? Okay, all right, excellent. Very good, perfect. All right, um, let's see. I think everybody gave me one. Good, all right. So thanks for tuning in. So next week, now, next week, you have homework this week. Next week is June 2nd, comedy night, okay? And you are the comedians, all right? I found some really funny uh, comedian clips that's going to help start us all off for our fun night, so we laugh. But you all are the comedians. So I need you to submit me your jokes because I'm creating the comedian lineup, okay? So if you can submit those to me before the weekend so I can create that lineup, all right? Um, is everybody able to come to comedy night next week? Anybody can't come? <gasps> Faith, you can't? Why? My dance is starting back up, so it's like the same time as, um, as this thing, so you can't. <laughs> Darn it! Oh, we'll miss, miss you. We will miss <laughs> you. Oh, bummer. Okay. You'll, and you'll miss our corny jokes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, um, but I might not be able to make it to. Oh, how come? Um. So, like, we have a senior thing for our. We have to pick up. Like, we're helping them decorate their caps and gowns, and we're going to like the community college to help set up to get ready for June fourth. But that's like from three to six. So, like, I probably won't be able. To, yeah, make it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, have fun if that's a special yeah. event. Have fun with that. Yeah, have fun yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, all right. I just checked my calendar. I can't make it next Tuesday. Ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm volunteering at, oh, I'm singing at a senior center, so that's going to be really sweet. I just did it a couple months ago, so. Gotcha. Gotcha. <sighs> all right. Well, you need to replace yourself then, okay? So that's your goal. Find someone else. <laughs> To take your spot so they can tell you about all the fun com comedy jokes that we did okay all right very cool um all right so uh i will send an email with the evaluation you know the drill fill out the evaluation be entered into a random drawing okay all right um you keep submitting your evaluations eventually you're gonna win if you haven't won yet all right last week lila won um, she's not on the show today, but last week a lot of the one. So it's a random of the draw. So hopefully you'll win. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming. And we'll see you, if not next week, we'll see you the following week on Tuesdays because we're continuing this um, as we go. So have a great week. Do some of your, your uh, fun theme weeks and we can't wait to hear about it. Yeah. Good to see you girls. <laughs>